Hi guys, it's username K and welcome back to my channel. This is part four of my IAM Road Smart Advanced Rider Journey. There is a part one, two and three before this, so if you haven't watched those, I advise that you watch those first in order and then come back to this one just so you can be up to date with everything that's been going on so far. So today I have my fourth observed ride with David Raymond. Weather's looking grim as you can see but we just crack on don't we and get on with it. For those of you concerned about the van please don't be. I've had a few comments about it but we're literally just waiting on some parts so that it's MOT worthy. So yeah I really really hope you enjoy this and without further ado let's get to it. I'm here for lesson four, putting soggy hands into wet gloves. We've got this maniac on a supercharged Kawasaki. Hey, <laughs> and I am on the Super Adventure S, the Super Adventure S. So today, guys, I've got David Raymond, who is going to be observing me. It's almost like when you played Crash Bandicoot as a kid and you got to take on the bosses he's the boss so I've got to impress him conditions are not ideal but we'll make them work I suppose that's the whole point of advanced riding is that you can kind of be advanced in any weather so yeah we'll give it a go pray for me Whew. I didn't think my visor would be steaming up this much, which is not ideal. It's so difficult when you don't really know the way that you're supposed to be going and I think my eyes have seen better days. Oh god, I've gone quiet again. I've gone quiet again. My visor open because it's steaming up, which is not ideal.
look at your leaves. I'm trying to do a million things at once. Grids are not too much of an issue. If you're on a straight, it's when you're on a bend. So they're really not great. Yeah. Oh, shit. Missed it. Um. Sorry, dude. I'm sure he'll redirect me. I've gone wrong. In your mirrors, in your mirrors. Where are we going? Straight on. It's really difficult, you know, guys, to um, to be looking so far ahead, but also looking right in your mirrors, whilst also watching your speed, whilst also trying to keep your safety bubble. Oh, we ended up in the town centre. I don't think we're supposed to end up here. Try not to lose my head. <laughs> oh, you gotta laugh. Oops, sorry. And I've got too close to this car in front. But the reason is if it breaks down, it's gonna be a pain for me to get around it. But self-awareness is a good trait. Safety bubble. Watch out for grids. Watch out for leaves. Watch out for big puddles of water. Are gonna take me? So we're gonna go right, left, 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 and right. Right, okay. by to look out for oh.
Right guys, I'm really sorry about this, but you're going to have to get a voice over here. It's not what I wanted to do, I hoped that you'd be able to hear this, but because of the torrential rain that day, the microphone, external mic on my GoPro just gave up the ghost and said, no ma'am, not today. So I'm going to break it down, what's happening here with the brief or debriefing with David. So here I'm just <laughs> whinging about a few things, making excuses, talking about how my pin lock isn't working very well, my visor's steaming up, <laughs> the uh, conditions aren't ideal, but obviously David knows this. So David asks me, how does he think it's gone? I just say that I feel like I'm riding a bit slower, I'm hanging back a lot due to the adverse weather conditions. I'm just basically being hypercritical of myself uh, as usual. Now, during the ride, I'd been thinking, oh, what did I do wrong? Remember that so I can explain to David what my mindset was, what I was thinking, why I did it and how I won't do it again next time. For example, I mentioned here that I trapped myself in with that car at lights. And I said that there were lots of mistakes I had personally thought I had made. David actually took me by surprise here and said that on the whole it was a good ride and he explains that there wasn't anything that I did that was unsafe which was great to hear and then he said the wonderful words if that had been your test you'd have passed I was literally shocked here and I was like genuinely Um, but yeah that was really really nice to hear So David then went on to say, if I was to be really, really, really picky, on the street with parked traffic to the left, there was a point where there was a white van coming towards you and your road positioning was a little bit close to the van. And to be honest, I agreed with David. In fact, I said the minute I went fairly close to that van, I I instantly thought, oh, I shouldn't be here. He's going to pick me up on this. So I completely agreed with his observation there. David asked me to explain my motorway riding. So I just explained that given the weather conditions, I was just trying to be super safe, even if it meant that I was going a bit slower than perhaps I normally would. I explained that I was just really conscious of braking distances and stopping distances and I was just trying to ride in an advanced manner where I basically thought riding a bit slower was appropriate. David said if he was being, you know, really, really critical, I could have gone a little bit faster. And yeah, I do agree in the bits where there were, you know, no cars kind of imminently in front of me. Yeah, I definitely could have gone a little bit faster. He said that in some circumstances I had a four second gap, maybe more from the car in front which he said was a good thing in this weather and yeah he uh, he basically said that it was a good safe ride which i was really really happy about so in this next bit he is telling me that we're going to go to gisborne where there are some proper nice twisties and kind of country lanes and that that is the next step of the observed ride so yeah let's crack a lack on but it was a good ride. So, you're not going to do any more for a while, any more dual carriage ride. Right? Um, we're going to go to Gisborne. I don't know if you know this road, at all, if you know this area. We're going to go straight. We have two turns to make, and that's all. Uh, no!
conscious that the white car is going to want to get past the red car. Sometimes you just got to show a bit of restraint. Whew, I haven't spoke much. <laughs> I'm concentrating. So on a dry day, there was a few overtakes there that would have most definitely been on. But with it being so wet, I thought this Audi might want to overtake in front. And I just wasn't going to risk an overtake. Garage. I remember it's not the first but the second. That's when you know you need new gloves. <laughs> when you start to get dye all over yourself. Yeah. <sighs> hey guys, another voiceover for this debriefing. I'm sorry, but the volume is just so low and the road traffic noise is so high. So here we are. Here I'm just explaining to David that my brain wasn't in road position mode when we first left the lay-by and that I wasn't on my A-game there but I tried to get into it quickly and sort of get my head in the game. Then I go on to explain the situation with the cars, why I didn't overtake them on that long country road. I just explain that with the red and white car I didn't feel like I was in a position where I could overtake them because if the back car tried to overtake the lead car as I tried to overtake, it would all just get a little bit messy. David mentioned though that given the conditions and the road, he didn't really see a safe opportunity to overtake on that road anyway, so that was good that I decided to show some restraint there. We just have a general chat about the ride and he says that I am my own toughest critic. I would kind of rather doubt myself than be overinflated with confidence and have a big ego and not be able to learn anything. So yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword really. With a general ride in today, David said that on the country lanes I was right to hang back a little bit. And it was quite funny because we actually had a bit of a laugh here because David pointed out that when I do my mirror checks and shoulder checks before a change of speed, when I get up to the signs, he mentioned that I might have been doing it a little bit too late. He said that the reason why you check your mirror and do your shoulder check is for your own safety basically to see what's coming up behind you uh, going through a, a change of speed and we had a laugh because when I was out with Dave Lindley the first time Dave commented that I was perhaps doing it a little bit too late I think Harry commented I was doing it a little bit too late then when I went out with Stephen I tried to correct it and then he commented that I was doing it probably a little bit too early to the point where I'd done it so early you know things could change in the time frame leading up to the change of speed sign and then it just made me laugh how then David said that I was back to doing it a little bit too late so we had a good laugh about that and that is something that I do struggle with um, finding that right time to do that mirror check and shoulder check it is literally like a, a fine line a, a balancing act as to when you should do it and it's something that I <laughs> struggled to master in my observe rides. I mean, David did say, at least you're doing it, which is a good thing. And it'll come, you know, naturally the more I do it. So, yeah, that's a good thing. Um, he also mentioned that I'm using my brakes to slow and gears to go, which is really important in the whole general IAM ethos and philosophy. 
And then David said as well, you know, that was another good section of ride where he couldn't see any reason why I wouldn't have passed if that was my test. So that was really reaffirming, reassuring, and yeah, made me feel pretty good about everything. Oh, hands are a bit numb. So, whilst I'm on the way back to the McDonald's with David, what I'll do is I will read you out what he put in the run sheet, which is in the Advanced Rider course logbook. So David's notes were as follows. Observer comments. A very good ride today in poor weather. Kate consistently rode to the system and in my honest opinion this would have been a test pass good restraint shown and an excellent overtake for my development plan david said read the highway code he sent me some homework actually which was in regards to overtaking filtering on the approach to a pelican crossing so i had to bury it into the highway code to get some answers for him on that one he put maintain the standard on next ride setting as test ready so i'm happy to say that after this observed ride david started to get the ball rolling in regards for getting me booked in for my test david also mentioned that even though he was going to book me in for my test i was still welcome to come along to some more observed rides if I could find the time to do so before my test and I took him up on this offer and had a further two rides so what this did was it just gave me time to iron out some kinks and just ride to the system more with the feeling of being watched sort of from behind which is what happens on your test so yeah I was really grateful for the opportunity to do those two extra observed rides I didn't actually record them because I wanted the experience as a normal human being who was going to do their IAM test and yeah I just didn't bring the cameras along for those because I wanted to be fully immersed in the experience and just take everything in like a, a normal person would as opposed to a vlogger. So yeah, it was a, a really good ride, it was good that it was raining because it kind of challenged me in different ways. And yeah, on the next vlog, it's going to be my test. Whether I pass or whether I fail, it's going to be uploaded for the world to see. So wish me luck, guys, because I'm going to bloody need it. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.